actually do couples therapy as well. And uh, one, thing, one thing with that is I tell people all the time, I was like, I don't believe in soulmates. I mm. think soulmates, that's like a myth. Like, I, okay. I don't believe in that. I, not someone about to get married. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the reason why I don't is just because if you really think about it logically, out of all the people in the world, we live in the smallest state. Okay. The one person in the whole world just ended up being in Rhode Island too. A small, few. small ass state. That makes no sense, right? Like, like that makes absolutely well, no sense. When you pick it down, when you pick it down that way, like, <laughs> yo, that makes absolutely no your sense. Your soulmate just happens to be Rhode Island out of seven yeah, billion yeah, people in the entire world. Right, right. Like, come that's on, funny. that's crazy. <laughs> that's <laughs> you, funny. You, okay, I can take so, it. So what I say is, people have a top three, and whatever. And the beautiful thing about it is, everyone's top three is different. So your top three is like your mandatories, because what if your unnegotiables man, if your mandatories are fulfilled, then your four, five, six are the sacrifices and the compromise that you're willing to do yeah. in a relationship to make it work. Damn. Okay, wait, talking about talking about sacrifices. Okay, Mr. Dr. Lambert, let me ask you. <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me just make sure. What are you talking about? We don't care. Two coffee. All right, guys. Welcome to another episode of the Open for Coffee. Yes, you know, I'm, you know, I was, I was thinking about what the heck I'm going to say in the beginning, and this has been kind of crazy to see the evolution of what we've been doing. And we were also talking about this before the show started, but it's like we're getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger guests and people who are like doing really, really making a change in like in different ways. Besides the absolute crazy impact this man has had already in the nightlife mm-hmm. and other things he's been doing, he's looking to put his imprint in the New England. And actually, well, you know, with the internet, everywhere else, too, with this new oh, business God. and other, other things he's getting into. But I'm really, really excited to bring somebody who's a powerhouse in the Providence community, somebody really, really important in the uh, New England and in, in, in general, because everybody knows this man. Damn. Everybody give it up for my man, Ray Al, bro. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Yes, thank sir. You, thank you. My man, Ray, bro. It's been a minute. I just saw you yesterday, too. Thank God. <laughs> but know, it's damn, it's been good, man. How the fuck have you been, bro? Yo, it's been a grip. I, How I've you been, been? I've been blessed. Uh, I've been blessed. I, uh, starting to see some of the, like, fruits of my labor over the last mm. decade. And it's a, it's a good feeling. So I'm, I'm in a good place right now. Man, it's been incredible to see, like, you know, the, the way I met you was you were not only just promoting, I'm sure you already, you know, you were doing your thing prior to that, but you were like, you know, you were very big in the nightlife scene just as a promoter, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. which is transitioning now as a GM. owner. Yeah, yeah I mean, GM, GM owner. Yeah. You know, I'm excited, man. So you're running so many different things. I see you via uh, VL. Yeah. I see you, you know, running in Paris as well, correct? Yeah. Yep. Now you have your own practice? Correct. What, was, Correct. First Correct. of all, wait, wait, they, they, we're everywhere right now. They, do you sleep? Because that's <laughs> barely, nightlife. Barely, that's you got the concept. daytime yeah, 9 to 5 yeah, corporate yeah, and you barely. got the nights. How does this work for you, bro? Uh, that is a great question. <laughs> um, I honestly say, like, it's something that I try to figure out myself daily. But what I will say is that a lot of people knew me from my events, promoting, things like that. Yeah. But the whole time... I was either in school or had a job dealing with psychology or mental health. Wow. I just didn't so broadcast fire. it. Yeah, That's yeah. So, so if you only saw me between the hours of 10.30 and 2 o'clock yeah. in the morning, yeah. what, what am I know. doing all the other hours? What do you, I, you know? Wow. I'm just not broadcasting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and my main reason for not broadcasting was because I didn't have a funnel. So I want, whenever I do anything, I like to have a kind of clean slate and I like to have some authenticity and a legitimacy to me. Yeah. So now that I am a licensed therapist, like I can actually charge um, gotcha. insurances. Insurances have verified me as being licensed. Yep, yep. So it's a very different thing than, say, if I was to give a bunch of um, resources, a bunch of advice, a bunch of help, and people looking at me and saying, oh, okay, like my son, I want you know my son to see you. I want my brother to see you. I'm yep. like, oh, no, I can't do that. Yeah, it's yeah. like, oh, well, then... It's almost yeah, like me yeah. displaying a bunch of fancy cars. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, look at yeah. this car, look at this car, look at <laughs> that yeah, car. Yeah, yeah. And then you're like, oh, I'd like to buy that car. And you're like, yeah. oh, no, no, I can't, yeah, I can't, can't do it. I can't do it. What the well, fuck? Yeah. Right, like, I like to have like a, a straight funnel where now people are actually reaching out and you know receiving services. Congratulations, by the way, because I saw you put, I saw in your story, you put, um, it's not, and I heard it in the background too, you put it in your story, you was like, oh, it's really nice to hear this for the first time, like, I'm sorry, Mr. Uh, Mr. Ray is uh, booked oh, up for yeah, the week, yeah, like, yeah. So, <laughs> like, booked up for the month, so, that's so amazing, me, man, congrats. For me, it's like, when you go to a doctor's office or any type of office, you just, 
you're, you're so used to like hearing certain things like, oh, uh, you know, we can't, we're, we're scheduled out for this month. Yep. And it's almost like a normalcy, right? Yeah, yeah. But when it's you becoming that person yeah, yeah. that is now like, oh, no, sorry, like we can't book you for, you know, this entire month. But he has one spot maybe, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, on a 3 o'clock Tuesday a month yeah. from now. And we'll keep, you posted you. On, yeah, we'll keep you posted on our cancellation yeah, just in case. But it's you, it's yeah, like, yeah. oh, shit. Like, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, like it's, you're hanging your in your solo, so you know what I mean. So it's like you're just yeah. starting out, so it's like you really got to take as much as you can, really. So right? Is right. that a struggle sometimes when you're like, damn, do I have to like get more hours or something like that? Yeah, um, a hundred percent. So the one thing about me is like my style of therapy allows me to probably generate and work a lot more than the average therapist. Okay. okay. Um, so I don't want to speak for everyone, but typically the average therapist. Here's someone's issues, uh, talks about the person's trauma, yep, yep. gives them a few tips here and there, very soft-spoken, very like, mm-hmm. okay, you know, everything's going to yep, be yep. all right. Mm-hmm. I'm not for everybody, and I tell people that. I'm, I'm not for everybody, and I Respect. didn't get into this to be for everybody. Respect. What I'm Respect. about is the individual across me becoming the best self mm. for them. And that requires some, like, motivation. That yeah, requires yeah. some inspiration that requires us to look at an unfortunate circumstance that happened in your life and me identifying any positive that could come from it and us looking Mm long-term to the future to make that positive happen instead of dwelling on the past. And so I spend, you know, six to seven hours a day, like motivating people straight up. So when I leave the office, I'm actually hyped. <laughs> yeah, I, for real. I either did a face to face or I did a virtual call yeah. or I did a phone call, really helping people change the dynamic of their lives from not seeing a way out to uh not being hopeful for the future to being like, you know what? Like I I, I can make it. I, yeah. I can do this thing. And when you see that light switch go off in, in, in people's faces and Damn. in their minds, it's like there's no better feeling to me. Man. That's crazy. There's such a weird dichotomy. Not weird, but like the nightlife and then the, the psych the psych- like the whole like study of everything. You must see so many examples in nightlife. You're looking around, you're probably analyzing the room, analyzing people's different character traits. Yeah. And you're probably, it's, yeah. it's probably like a crazy character study for you to watch. Yeah, yeah. Um so a, a couple of things real that shit. Uh, <laughs> That's real shit. a lot of people think that both are extremely different, but what I like to and I didn't even realize this until later on, but mm-hmm marketing and promotion that is psychology yeah like okay. like you're trying to guess you're trying to think what people are gonna like yeah there's nothing more psychology than that it must be why you're so, so good at it's it it's just like <laughs> a different vessel for me to uh be creative with my psychology background for real. were you all right so you said you was already in school while you were promoting all that stuff right Correct. so but where all right so that's yeah, I matter of fact matter of fact i'll even state this yeah, yeah. i was I already had a bachelor's from Boston College in psychology Mm -hmm. before I came back home to Rhode Island and started promoting. Jesus Christ. And so, all right, so even going back a little further, in high school, did you already know this is what you you wanted to, like, do nightlife and this? Or were you, like, you kind of stumbled upon the nightlife thing and you was already doing the psychology? Or what what came first? Because you're great. Yeah, you got a a, a fucking master grip on both. Yeah, Obviously, now that you're all the way legit with your own practice on this side, GM on this side, and you was already, you know what I'm saying? So, like, what? how how does that go? So, it's very interesting. If I was to speak honestly, um, the promotion came first. So, like most people, Sweet 16s was, like, a big deal. Like, everyone had a Sweet 16. Hell, yeah. And it was, like, that one party. And, unfortunately, like, when I was growing up, like, uh, nine times out of ten, there was gonna be an issue afterwards. Like that would just like kind of you know with goes, it. Bro. So yeah. my father knew about everything that was going on in the neighborhood and was <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. "Listen, like we're gonna we're not gonna do it like everybody else. Like we're gonna keep it kind of like you know, fifty people, mostly family." Your pops was like, "Let's your pops have to you know do this promotion stuff." Like at first, no, 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 no. So this is just for my sweet sixteen. Oh, okay, like, okay, like okay, 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 okay. Got you, got you, got you. Yep. So I was like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." And then I don't know if it was MySpace or what at the time, but. On like a social media platform, I'm pretty much like, yo, my sweet 16 is this Friday. Like, oh, <laughs> crap. And he, he got a whiff of it. Damn. And he shut the whole shit down, Damn. pulled the plug. Cause he saw that there, like, we had like an online kind of like invitation thing. And he, like, again, he wanted 50 people, mostly family. Yeah, yeah. And we yeah. were at a buck 20 with like 20 <laughs> family members. <Yeah. laughs> and then, so he was like, nope, not having it. So I never had the sweet 16. Mm. And everybody was like, oh, like, can't yeah, wait, yeah, yeah. can't wait. And, uh, 
So I, that was technically my first event, but it never happened. You know? <laughs> Damn. Yeah, yeah. And it's since then, like, you just, what what attracted you? Because I'd imagine, you know, you're a well put together young man. Like, you know, growing up, you was probably like, you know, Mr. Popularity kind of mm-hmm. growing up in school. Mm-hmm. You was kind of, mm-hmm. and like that, you know, already like, naturally, you probably like had a lot of people around you. You was already in, you know, in that crowd. You yeah. know, and you probably figured out, well, shit, so, let me so capitalize if somehow. If I'm being completely transparent and honest, um, my friend, uh, Drew Coria, uh, so he moved out to LA um, to be an A and R, but he uh, was like two to three years older than me. Yep. I want to say two, but that was like my version of like who I deemed to be like the coolest kid in the school. Got you. And he ended up being my best friend at the time. So he was into throwing events. So just by being kind of like attached to him, mm. uh, that him and uh, my boy DJ, shout out DJ. Um, we, we had this group called Tough Tunes. Nice. And we would throw, like, events and stuff like that. And, like, mind you, this is before I even knew the logistics. I knew about getting paid from it. I knew yeah, about anything. Yeah. I legit just got butterflies from throwing an event. Yeah. And usually that's room. when you know that you're onto something. Yeah. It's when you'll do something whether you get paid for it or not. No, 100%. I mean, that's how we started. We wasn't making the most money in the beginning. <laughs> mm-hmm. But yeah, you, gotta you remember. I mean, we were talking about, like, the beginning stages of what we were doing, um... That was that way. We were knee deep into doing all the events, yeah. three, four events a night, four or five nights a week. Yeah, all that crazy shit. So like, and then we had, you know, we started. You already, you already brewing with ideas, and you came to us, and we started talking about potentially doing, you know, to get your, you know, for your podcast, your podcast to get started. And now your shit is, woo, yeah, your shit yeah. is doing numbers now. Yeah. Okay, that's just that's another endeavor you've taken on. <laughs> so like, <laughs> the, you know, content creation. And podcasting, because I, I consider you know when you do your solo shit is one thing. Yeah, that's that's completely that's a completely separate monster from you sitting down and actually talking to people in the podcast form, and then also talking to people in the therapy form. So yeah, like, yeah, yeah, what yeah. do you find? What is your favorite at the moment as far as like these type of outlets go? Yeah. As far as talking to people goes, so I know psychology could be taxing. I'd imagine. Yeah, yeah. Mm. But you know, the therapy part could be taxing. I'd imagine. But how about you know? Yeah, I guess the podcast. Do you enjoy that as well? Yeah, yeah. So I, I 100% Super. enjoy my uh, podcast. Come on. Um, I would say obviously my practice is number one though. Okay. Um, and I would fine. say that because I have individuals now that wanted to speak to a therapist for a long time Mm -hmm. but just never felt comfortable never felt like they could talk to someone that they would like actually click with and so i'm actually like servicing as a gateway for a lot of people to get a lot of shit off their chest you know what i mean so i I would have to say like my my practice the podcast honestly was a pure um just enjoyment project because i Mm. just love podcasts so i was like all right, like, let me do this. Mm-hmm. The one good thing about doing events is that you grow a very thick skin yeah. about failing. Yeah. Mm. The, yeah. And, and, and the, the easier you can grow that kind of scab and rescab of, like, failing multiple times mm-hmm. and still, like, going through with stuff, yeah, 100%. you become a monster because you'll be able to allow yourself to put in situations where you might do well, mm-hmm. you might fail. But yeah. either way, you're going to go through with it. Yeah. So that was the podcast. I was like, listen, if I get 50 people listening, if I get 500, like, mm-hmm. cool. Uh, this is something that I want to do. What made you, what podcast did you see that you were like, that it clicked? It was like, yo, you know what? I fuck with that. I can definitely see myself doing this. You want to hear something really funny? And like I said, this is, I'm being honest and transparent. My favorite podcast, I wouldn't even necessarily put my podcast at like my favorite podcast right like i I can be honest and say that because a lot of my favorite podcasts they have like very strong opinions Mm. they're swearing they're saying oh yeah yeah, like pro like pretty like raunchy stuff yeah yeah. and i can't do that just because like my profession and everything like i can't do that so i technically can't even make the content that i enjoy the most but I'm being honest and saying for now, that. Like, for I now, just, for I now. Just, I just, I just, I, I can't do it. For now, when you said on um, 10 million, you know, it's I, different. I would say, <laughs> I mean, the, the podcast I listen to most, it gotta be Joe Budden, unfortunately. Word? Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. listen. That, that, that's that. like my guy. And um, I would say a mix between that, I like, I mean, obviously Joe Rogan. Of course. Um, I don't know if you guys are hip to Alex Armozzi. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's like, he's a genius. Yeah. Like, like, when it's all said and done, like, 
people people should revere to him as like yeah. Albert Einstein of yeah, this yeah, yeah. like generation. He's 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 that guy. I fuck with him heavy. I started rocking a lot of. I realized I like I've been watching him. I'm like, damn, I got so many plaid shirts. I'm like. Is it because oh, Alex yeah. Hormozzi? What the fuck? <laughs> it's like the same one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I got bad plastic, uh, plastic. Yeah. Now nah, I fuck with I fuck with Alex Hormozzi heavy. I like. Um, I'm a huge fan of. Uh, damn, I feel bad. Patrick Ben David. Because you, you said you said you Patrick said Beb, uh, yeah. Joe Budd's pa- podcast is Joe JBP, right? Yeah, JBP. Yeah, yeah. PBD. Yeah. Then yeah. JRE and PBD. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I fuck with um, I, Pat Ben David. I tap into that too. I tap into that. Yeah, yeah. Do you have any like? Dream guest, you know, like give me like three, three, like give me five people that you would love to sit down and talk to, like just pick their brain, on like on a long form, like long format type of thing, uh, and why? Don't don't yeah. just be like yeah, yeah, Jay Z. So, no, no, I want to know why. So I would do uh, Fab. That's my favorite. Okay, artist, obviously. Yeah, yeah, you, you know what's funny? Yeah, you brought him out. You brought him <laughs> out. That's crazy. <laughs> you know what's funny? You look. I was just telling this like his brother. You look like a young version of his his older brother. Yeah. And I was and his older brother. His brother's favorite rap is Fab, Fab too. Like everybody loves that. Fab, so that's funny nah, as fuck. Fab, Fab's my favorite. So I would do Fab. Uh, I would do Barack Obama. Um, for sure. Go. That that would probably be my first, honestly. Um, who else would I do? I want to do my father. Nice, nice. <laughs> like I, I, I want to give him some light because I, I feel like. His story is pretty unique, pretty crazy. Yeah. And like learning from like my father's story, you could be like, oh, like this is kind of why like Ray is the way he yep, is yep, now. Yep, yep, like, yep. My Same father was like, my father like the man, like is the man, but like he was like he was that dude. He was that dude. You got to get yep. it on wax. Yeah. I did that with yeah. my grandma actually. I got her like her story see, and stuff, see? just like just yeah. recorded one time. So now I can always get her straight because you know the family stories they get they start twisting and stuff yeah, over yeah, the years. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. Get, you got to get them on, man. You yeah. should definitely do that. Yep. Nah, I, I gotta do that. So those those would be my my top three right there. That's top three. So Fab, Brock, Brock and, and your my pops. father. Yeah, fire yeah, man. Yeah, Damn, yeah, that's yeah, so yeah, tough. Yeah, 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 Yo, top how do you so going so lo- logistically? How do you go about actually starting your own practice? Because I know my sister, she has a master's and all this stuff, and she's looking to start a practice, you know, in the future and. She wants to do more of a holistic style of therapy versus she doesn't want to, I, as far as what I know, she doesn't want to um, prescribe any medication. So she wants kids to like, you know, whether it be through dance, through music, therapy, you know, instruments and art and anything like that. That's how she wants to do it. So like, what would you say is like the first, besides getting your, you know, becoming legit and, and being able to be acknowledged yeah. by these insurances and other, you know, yeah, big yeah. corporations as a licensed therapist. Yeah. What would you say is like, you know, so some of, I would say is to start off um, the way I'm doing it, to be honest with you. And so where I'm at, it's like a hybrid situation. So basically um, I'm with like RI counseling and associates. Got you. And so they provide the infrastructure they provide the office space. Perfect. But what happens That's is what I, need, I need to hit that. Each each billable like portion that comes in, they get a small percentage of. Gotcha. It makes sense. But they're bringing in the, the clients. So so it, it's either or. So like I can have my day filled with people that I brought on on my own, or they say, hey, like we have a bunch of people reaching out to us. Like is your schedule open? Mm. So it works both ways. That's gotcha. But that way you get to learn the inside of like the business. But also what I did, which, you know, it's interesting. A lot of people didn't do is that I started like Lambert therapy and wellness as a business. Mm. So when the insurance billable hours and the money comes in, it gets paid to Lambert therapy and wellness, mm. not like Raymond Lambert or yeah. where yeah, I was yeah, working yeah, before, yeah, 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 like, yeah. stuff like that. So it, that's very important because no matter where I go now, I have a track record of yeah. this like money coming in yeah. and Sometimes it's too late for people to realize that. Like, they're getting paid, and it's, like, salary, 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 and then they want to jump off on their own, but then, like, they want to (laughs) buy property, and then they don't have a track record of making money through their business, so, like, they got to wait. And So the quicker you can kind of, like, get on with your own business, because you can take it anywhere. Yep. So if I, say if I did some, like, online therapy through, like, a different avenue. Yep. That payment would still go through Lambert Therapy and Wellness as a business. Mm. Yeah. So everything comes back to the business yeah. mm. instead of like one business, me over here. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Everything's going every, 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 coming like, through there first and then and then correct. it trickles down to you and everything else. Correct. That's a smart way, correct. man. Damn. Damn. So, you know, doing so as far as like, you know, doing all this nightlife stuff, I know that, you know, and and doing the this this is what this is the most important thing about nightlife. People need to believe who the person is that they're coming out to see. You know, even though like 
you know, I'm not saying you're an artist like, per se, but like when it comes to promoting and being being a promoter in the sense like if I don't fuck with you, I'm not gonna I'm not first of all I'm not even following your page. Secondly, I'm not gonna, you know, if your party's in late, I'm not going. Now, with people already having that trust in that whatever you do is of that quality or anything like that, you know, has it been I, I, I'm curious about the transition into this new, um, this new venture. Well, not new venture, but you know what I mean, like this mm-hmm. brand new venture you're in. Because um, I think it's important that people also believe the person. The fact that you look the way you look and you do, you provide this service. How old are you, by the way? Um, thirty-two. Thirty-two. You see, you're yeah. doing this at such a young age. We're thirty-two. Thirty-two. Yep, 32, 32 yeah. Like we're all thirty-two. Yeah, so yeah. it's kind of crazy. Like it feels like a feels like a magic number for some reason. Yeah, right. <laughs> Everybody doing their thing at thirty-two. Yeah. But you know, they do say men hit their prime in their thirties, like yeah. early thirties, and then yeah. their financial prime in their forties. So it sort of feels like you know that's where we're we're we're, we're, we're on route. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> but um, you know, of all these things that you've been doing, what have you say? And what can you say has been the most challenging of all the things that you started? Uh, most challenging. Um. Most challenging is preparing for family life. Mm. Mm. Because you got kids? No, but that's awesome. the whole point, right? Because nice. like, uh, I have a fiance. We're gonna yep. get married next year. But then it's like, all right, once kids are involved and like once like the real like marriage aspect comes mm-hmm. into play, like what am I gonna cut out? Yeah. There's, okay. It's twenty four hours in a day. Yeah. Yeah. Realistically, realistically, okay. You know, I gotta, yeah, I gotta, I gotta give you some props, man. Like, besides everything you're doing, bro, like you've done, you have no kids. You, you've started multiple, you know, you've done multiple things successfully at this age, at 32. Mm-hmm. You're, you're about to get married. Like, it's almost like picture perfect what you've been doing. Like, did you plan this out? Because um, this, is, this is interesting to me as somebody who's single. You know, you got somebody who got kids. You know, he's doing this thing in the business world. Like, as far as he's running, you know, obviously, you know, Red Eye's doing well. This is all thanks to that, man. And he's doing this thing. He got two kids, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. You know, everybody has different routes to the way, you know, and I have my own way of how I think things right, may go. Right. Did Is this the way you planned so, it? So, I think the key word of that is plan. Okay. And I've always been someone that was able to sacrifice for a better future, right? Mm. So you could look at me now and say, like, oh, this and that, this and that. But, like, when I was at Boston College, I'm mm. working at the convenience store, right? Mm. Uh, when I, I could show you guys, like, starting up with, like, my Lambert Therapy and Wellness, because of how the billing works, um, basically uh, the, the, the insurance companies, the way the money gets dumped, it'll mm-hmm. get dumped in my account, like, the second Friday of each month, right? Mm. And because like I just got started and I'll still getting I'm still getting used to like how they like document things. Mm-hmm. For like my whole two months, I haven't received a dollar. And so well, like all world. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yep, and, yep. and so and so because like it's all gonna be like insurance stuff that like needs time to process and yeah. like I'll get the money down the line. I'm yeah, not yeah, worried course, about course, that. Like course. everything's like accounted for. But like, you know, it's just a lot has to do with just planning and looking ahead. Mm. Uh, when it comes to finding a partner, that's a big kind of like trial and error basis as well. Okay. Like, see the signs. Like, yeah. you know what's good for you. You know what's bad for you. And a lot of people like to be blinded by other things. Oh, but this. Oh, but that. It's like, yeah. see the signs. Yeah, see bro, the signs. That's, that's big. Um. I actually do couples therapy as well. And uh, one, th- one thing with that is I tell people all the time, I was like, I don't believe in soulmates. I mm. think soulmates, that's like a myth. Like, I, okay. I don't believe in that. At- Not someone about to get married. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the reason why I don't is just because if you really think about it logically, out of all the people in the world, we live in the smallest state. Okay. The one person in the whole world just ended up being in Rhode Island too. A small, few. small ass state. That makes no sense, right? Like, like that makes absolutely well, no sense. When you break it down, when you break it down that way, like, <laughs> yo, that makes absolutely no your sense. Your soulmate just happens to be around out of seven yeah, billion yeah, people in the entire world. Right, right. Like, come that's on, like, that's crazy. <laughs> that's <laughs> funny. You, you, okay, I can take so, it. <laughs> so what I say is, people have a top three, and whatever. And the beautiful thing about it is, everyone's top three is different. So your top three is like your mandatories, because what if your unnegotiables? Man, if your mandatories are fulfilled. Then your four, five, six are the sacrifices and the compromise that you're willing to do yeah. in a relationship to make it work. Damn. Okay, wait, talk about sacrifices. 
Okay, Mr. Dr. Lambert, let me ask you. <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me just make sure. First of all, I know a lot of people with that last name. Amazing drummers, by the way. Do you are you cousins with somebody by the name of Trey? By the way, by, Trey by any chance? Lambert. Like in a, in another, uh, he's in, he's from Philly actually. I don't think so. No, no I, well. I don't think so. Nasty, I'm the one. Remember I met him? He oh, he drummer. plays for like Little Dirk. Plays for oh. uh, uh, fucking Lauren Hill. Bunch of people. Oh wow. That's anyway, Trey Lambert, fucking yeah. fire. Anyway, point. Uh, what was I trying to say? Fucking um, damn, Murph, help me out here. You're talking about relationships and oh, right? relationships. Yes, yes. Now you were talking about. You know, because I, I need to do this. I write in my journal every day. I try to write something, even if it's if I even if I have nothing, try to write something. Yeah. So you say because I've made a list. I got you know recently. You know he knows whatever went through some sort of situation. Like just had to it made me looking at things a lot different as far as like women and relationships and that kind okay. of shit goes. So I've like I made a list of putting down like because I heard you know I heard this and this was very important. I was like you know um they said if you are looking for these things in a partner. Like how far, like how far are you from that list that you create? So like you know all those things that get you know obviously that was you know from your perspective doing the one two three and then the four five thing, but like also something I I put into practice was I, I, I I'll, I'll let you finish, mm -hmm. but I hate that. But continue. well, okay, okay, okay. Well, but <laughs> something I did was that I heard was you know write down the things that you're looking for in somebody and then like you know I'll be how, that person. How close, so are, you, like, how close are you to that? Or, or like you know are you providing you, those same you, things? You, you know what's funny? So. um I had a client of mine, and uh, this relates to this. I had a client of mine, and she kind of, like, she, uh, our thing was, like, she wanted to, like, move on from a past relationship. So she was, she's not, like, the club person. So I said, you know, the dating apps, they're, like, big right now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like, a lot of people actually find success on them. Mm -hmm. I was like, well, why don't you try that out? And she's like, oh, like, I was thinking about it, but, um, you know, it, you know, I, I was writing the answers down, and... I, I, I'm not that interesting. Like, mm. I, I don't find myself that interesting. And I said, well... Okay. I was like, do you plan on dating yourself? <laughs> and so, okay. in, your, in, your, in okay. your statement, you're like, you know, what you wish for, how close are you to that? But it's like, you're not dating yourself. Okay. So, so why would that matter? Yeah. Well, like, I, like I, yeah. I, I, I like, like, compatibility in terms of, like, you got this unlocked, she got this unlocked. Got it. Okay. Because, if like, that's how I rock. Yeah, right? yeah okay. And 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 you clearly found success in that, like the fact that you found somebody with everything you're doing in the midst of, you know, all these businesses and different things you're running. How long have you? If you don't mind me asking, yeah, like seven how long? Seven and a half years. Seven. Okay, you see okay. now. You see that's that's yeah, seven right. and a half. How the fuck have you, especially in the in in the in what you do? How have you kept that strong? And then you're about to get married, which is like the next biggest step. Yeah. After you've done all these amazing things already, like how yeah. how do you feel like you hold that together? Like you know. Yeah. Um, well, one, I had my fun in college, like, got uh, her. That, that, so I, I didn't need the need to have like a lot of women around all the time. You know what I mean? Uh, another part of it is a lot of people view, um, being single, um, as a way of like growing up, mm -hmm. mingling with girls. And that's like a way to actually like show your manhood. Like how many girls can, can you bag? How many yeah. girls can you sleep okay. with? But it honestly takes, like, a real man to have one woman where he's like, this is my one, mm -hmm. and, like, I want to start a family with this one. Yeah, yeah. 100%. And a lot of it, too, is all perspective, right? Like, even if people view n not being married as, like, what they want to do, I'm kind of in support of that. But for me, it was, like, if I'm outside and I'm doing everything in the world and I have all these things going on, I need a stable household, right? I hear that. Like, I don't need traction in and out, yeah, in and yeah, out, not yeah. knowing what to expect. Like, <laughs> yeah. if, if I can get any kind of stability anywhere, I'm going to run to it because gotcha. I do so many things that aren't stable. Got it. Yeah. Mm. That's the worst. When you're doing so much, you need the house to be, like, straight. Like, right. I don't have to worry if I'm coming home to bullshit. Or right. If I'm worried about a text that I sent the other night to somebody, like, no, just don't even fucking dabble in that shit. Right, right. That's how I've always been. Especially with right. kids now, like, the most important thing to me is just to... Just keep the family together, you know. I would never do anything, period. But especially because I want to make sure my kids have both parents. Because I didn't, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, that's super yeah. important. Respect. Mm. Yeah. I got a question. Do you ever think about doing uh, like taking calls on your podcast? Like, I'm sure people could call in and you could kind of like almost do what you do in your practice. Some sort of like, hotline on the pod for like some content. I think that would probably go well. Um, potentially, yeah. Potentially, um, I'm still. To be honest, like I'm like new to everything. Man. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. I'm still trying to like find my way and Your like groove. 
I've been lucky just to know certain people that like are very interesting and have stories and are yeah, successful yeah. in their own right. But I'm still kind of navigating exactly how I want to set everything up. Mm. Yeah. So like I, I wouldn't rule it out at all. You know what I mean? I think it'd be dope because you see some people do it. Even like comedians, like I like a Theo Vaughn a lot. I don't know if right? Know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He I like can, and too. you know he has like a lot of solo too. podcasts and he'll just like some people call in and he'll kind of just give them advice. You know, and it doesn't. Now, have to it's be usually live. bad advice because they're comedians. But yeah, I feel like if people want better for sure. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. This is what you do, so it's almost <laughs> like yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that, that's a solid idea. That's a solid idea. Yeah, I, lo- I like that kind of shit, man. Um, let me ask you this, bro. So, like, you know, um, do you feel like doing the the therapy thing, where do you want to take it? Like, what is the ideal place for this entire thing? Like, is it you having a bunch of therapists under you and you being, you know, you kind of running things, coming here or even across the nation or, l- yeah. you know, different Lambert practices yeah, yeah, around? Yeah. Like, I- I'm just asking, what's the, maybe not the end all be all, but just give me like one of the main goals for this new, this new venture you're in, yeah. especially since you, you are the yeah. sole proprietor, sole owner and all that kind of good stuff. So I, I hate to be that guy. I hate mm. to be that guy, but, um, I can't spoil like all the beans yet. Just because, like, what I want to do, it hasn't been done yet. And I'll tell you off camera, and you'll be like, oh, that's why. Okay, okay, respect, respect, respect. I actually have, like, an investor who, like, we're looking to do, like, some really big things. Nice. Like, like, by the end of next year. Yeah, yeah. Like, when I say, like, it hasn't been done yet, it hasn't been done At all. So that's why I don't even want to, like, respect. Yeah, man, we're going to talk about it. But along those lines, sure. Along those lines, 100%. Like, I, I plan on, because of social media, um, you know, I'm not only restricted to Rhode Island. Um, there was, you know, two weeks ago. So for my Mondays, I usually have people that want to pay out of pocket. They're, they're allowed to pay out of pocket. They can either call or, um, you know, FaceTime, things of that nature. Mm -hmm. And there was someone all the way from Virginia who like reached out to me. You know what I mean? It was just from like the content that I post on social media. He gravitated towards, he's like, Hey, I don't have any black therapists. Not only do I not have any black therapists, I don't want to be, I don't want to have to worry about my therapist not understanding me. Mm -hmm. Um, there was a couple of sessions I had this, this past week that like, you know, uh, one individual, he said cat. During the, <laughs> the, during the session and like, and, but funny. he said it and then didn't even like pause to be like, like yeah, correct yeah, himself. Yeah, right? yeah, like, yeah. He kind of felt comfortable. He already knew that I knew what he was yeah. talking about. So nah, like, like things like that, I feel like is gold because you know we, we don't. There's just not a lot of me in that space. Like yeah. in Rhode Island, especially, the black male therapist it takes up about four percent of all therapists. Wow, and so. That's just that's just skin color and yeah, yeah. and gender, right? Now you mm-hmm. gotta dip into the personality, mm-hmm. like and that's that would cut it down Which even one more of, even, of like even more, someone yeah. who's just book smart and mm-hmm. has a license versus yeah. someone who can articulate himself, who yeah. you can relate with, and has the experience to. that yeah, you, can, yeah, yeah. Bro, so bro. It's, yeah, yeah. Mm. What do you think of like the websites, like the therapy websites, like BetterHelp and stuff like that? You think those are effective and stuff? That's a great question. That is a great question. I'm gonna revert back. <laughs> great um, question, yo. Yeah, no, nah, it is. I'm gonna revert. I'm gonna revert back to something that you kind of brought up earlier, mm-hmm. and you were kind of like, you know, it's cool that you're kind of like showing, like, you know, when I say something, it's like I'm pretty much doing it too. Mm-hmm. I think there's value in that, mm-hmm. and a lot of people are like, oh, like, you know, you have the the lounge that you manage, and you have all these things. Like, you don't want to make a separate like Instagram profile for like your practice or like for your, like your therapy stuff. And I said no, because I believe that my therapy will thrive on people knowing who they're getting into mm. bed with per se. Yeah, you know yeah, what yeah, I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, like, absolutely. I, so does it, is it better than nothing? A hundred percent. Yeah. Should you do a background check and be comfortable with your therapist? So a hundred percent, a hundred percent. Yeah, something about the, like I mean, you, I know you do virtual calls too, but I don't know something about it feels impersonal almost. I'm sure you'd probably prefer regular sessions like in person. Yeah, but I don't know. I don't. So, so I my 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 go to is always as long as it gets done, it gets done. Yeah. Are there better ways? Yeah. Like in my opinion, yes. Yeah. But would I rather you? Like bottle everything up because yeah. you can't sit down in front of me for some reason. Like, nah, no, no, nah, no, nah, that's facts. No, that's facts. That's facts. And some people need some people need it bad. Yeah. And like, like th- there's a lot of things like social phobias that like they're not over yet, right? Yeah. Like like social anxiety and things of that nature where like 
their stomach starts queezing. They start mm-hmm. actually getting physically sick yeah. of the thought of being out in public. Yeah. Mm. So, like, for people like that, you have to do, like, you have to, like, nah, do nah, video calls and stuff like that. I, you know? I wasn't even thinking that hard. That's true, bro. Like, I, I'd be thinking, like, you, wouldn't you rather be in person? But... There's also that, like you know, if I trusted you, you know, I'm fucking in the noise. I'm gonna call you. Yeah. Oh, well, I'm, a, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know, honor that meeting, right. that Facetime call, whatever right. the kid, you know, that Zoom chat, right. or whatever it is. Like, 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 I, I will forever meet people where they are, mm-hmm. but I also have that understanding with them. Like, this is where we are today, but please believe, like, we're not staying here. Yeah, yeah. Facts. The, this is the entry, but this isn't the end yeah. goal here. Mm-hmm. Mm. So, like. We're, we're, we're gonna get our shit together and like, make moves. You know, what respect, I mean? man. Yeah. What would you What would you say to uh, your eighteen year old self, man? Because now that you're thirty two, you're a grown man. I know you're completely different from you know when 18? you was in college or even leaving high school. Yeah. So like, that's what um, I can't even think of myself at eighteen. I brought fucking reckless. That's what. That's what. That's what all I hear. I mean, I was doing a couple things. I was already touring and that type of thing, but. I, I would say I was. I felt invincible at that age. So like, what would you say? You know, what would you say to yourself at eighteen? I'll, I'll be honest with you, 18 in high school and then 18 in college was very two different 18s for mm. me. So because I went to Boston College, right? Yep. And I knew about probably like four people that were there. Gotcha. And so like living on your own, things like that, yeah. you kind of have to get your shit together. Yeah. Like you, you can't no really half-ass like being in a different state and like doing things on your own and being able to be a... a, a fuck up per se you know what i'm saying like you can't really do that so 18 year old years old in high school i was still like you know very self-conscious uh i wasn't that confident um i don't know if i portrayed it that way but i, I wasn't that confident yeah, yeah. <laughs> um i kind of was still a little bit of like a follower mm-hmm. um but 18 in college it was like a blank slate for me yeah and i was like if you're gonna become who you want to become like there's thing. no better time than right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Time, yeah. New time, new environment, new everything. And what was beautiful about it is the part of the reason why I am the way I am today, and I did like kind of like my own kind of like trauma stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's not too traumatic, but like to me it was kind of messed up. Uh, when I was like 16, 17, it was during the time when like the the whole like mortgage thing crashed. Oh god. And I don't yeah. know if you guys remember like 2007, 2008, but there was no job. Yep. So like back in the day, if you worked at KFC, like there you was, was nothing. Man. Like yeah, you, yeah. you worked at McDonald's, yeah, like yeah, yeah. you had a check coming. That's yeah. all that mattered. Yeah. And so like I was willing to work anywhere. So I was sending you know applications to KFC, McDonald's, all Everywhere, Burger yep. King. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I'm putting that. I take honors on the application. Extra overqualified. See if like that that would work. And I never once got a call back. Yeah. And then so like I had all of this energy, all of this like work ethic, and like. My opportunity wasn't there. Mm. So then I told myself, I'm like, all right, like the minute you get an opportunity, like you got to take it. Because you remember when it was like doors closed. And so I still remember when it was like doors closed. Mm -hmm. You want to work. You want to like get out there and make your own. But there's legit no way to do it. There's nothing to do. So now with like everything that's going on, it's like, oh, no, I'm going to take advantage of everything. You have to. The iron's hot, you know? Yeah. You have to. Damn, man. So, um... What would you know? And as far as like you know, a few of these bits because you know a lot of people are definitely going to be interested in how like a lot of these things got started and, and that kind of thing. Um, what would you say in your you know in your opinion you know with so many different things going on? What would you say like especially with this generation like what you know because you you touched on something I definitely want to you said you you did a lot of self reflection and you know you you maybe like reverse engineered a few things going on with yourself. Yeah. So what kind of questions does somebody ask themselves that they needed to like, you know, you peel back down, you know, what they got going on? What kind of things did you do to self-reflect? Well, the first thing is outside of um, having something wrong with like intellectually, yep. Yep. Um, we kind of all know the things that we do that we shouldn't be doing. Yeah. Like, outside of, like, legitimately, like, just kind of, like, not having it all there, we all know what we do is wrong when we do it. Mm-hmm. Now it's just asking yourself why. Okay. That's the first. Wh- why am I doing it? I know I'm out getting drunk every night, but, like, why? Okay. That's the first. Why? Why? Okay. Because a lot of us don't, we, we don't even want to answer that question. Yeah, it's, it's uncomfortable. Sometimes. You know? And yeah. that's the first step of, like, 
okay, I'm doing this to feel better. Okay, why do you want to feel better? Mm-hmm. What happened? Feel crappy about, about this. Okay, yep. what happened with this? Oh, th- and then and then you can kind of like start Keep that going back, cycle. Going back. But like asking yourself why. And one of my fen- like fundamental uh, ways of doing therapy is very much where the clients see themselves in a best case realistic scenario, mm-hmm. right? So if I say Murph, mm-hmm. career, relationship, uh, mentally, the best version of you five years from now, what does that look like, right? And you tell me, okay, it looks like this, looks like this, yep. looks like this, looks like this. I lay it out for you. And I say, okay, cool. Mm-hmm. What you just did was you laid out the roadmap, which we're both going to follow. Mm. Now, you identified what you want to do. Yep. So it's not me saying, Murph, you need to be uh, uh, part of the post office now. Yeah. Right? That's <laughs> like, if you say you want to be the biggest creative director of all time, yep. cool. Like, yeah. I'll put that on the board. Yeah. Now, what I'm going to hold you to is making sure that our actions align with mm. your perceived best self. No, it's smart. And it's 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 simple, but it's not easy. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. every day in life we have these options to do one thing or we do the other. And yeah. then if we just constantly ask ourselves, is this leading us to our best self? Mm-hmm. Yes or no, our life becomes very simple. Mm-hmm. Very yeah. simple. Okay. But we Damn. just not only do we don't we a lot of us don't imagine our best selves down the line. Mm. A lot of us are here for the right now, yep. the easy fix, yep. the you know, the the quick kind of like dopamine rushes that we're getting, and a lot of the quick dopamine rushes that we get is actually de- detrimental to that five year best self. Oh mm. yeah, for sure. And so you can't have both. Mm. So which one is it gonna be? Yeah. Especially if you're trying, if you're trying to work on something, but you're fucking gaming all the time, it's like you just that dopamine, like you said, it's like you probably should just be focused on what you really just focus on, because that's not going to get you where you need to be. Right. Yo, you're gonna have to send that invoice afterwards, bro. I'm getting. Some no, I was gonna say we're getting, we're getting some fucking <laughs> Yo, uh, free session today. Fucking gems, <laughs> boy. Yeah, yeah, God yeah. damn. Yeah. What do you feel like? You know, besides already you you being yourself and the things that you're doing, the way you look at all your style, and you already did say that you're. You're not for everybody, which mm-hmm. is something that we do as far as, you know, the video production goes. So I, I yeah. tell people, like, I'm like, yo, we're probably not the ones for the job. Like, yeah. you know, we may not be the ones for the job, but I, like. I actually tell my clients that it's okay for them to swear and it's also okay for me to swear. Yeah. <laughs> okay, good. Straight up. Yeah. Like, I, I, good. Like that. I was like, some some points, I'm never going to, like, swear at them. Yeah, yeah. But some points need to swear to get the, to hit it home. To get the point across, yeah. Mm. That's emotion. You're putting yeah. your emotion into it. They yeah. should want that. Yeah. They don't want a robot. And w- what I tell every, all my clients, too, is, like, I'm thoroughly aligned with the vision that you have with your best self. Mm-hmm. I would be a shitty therapist if, like, all my clients are, like, come in and, like, they get worse or, like, they say the same. It's like, no, yeah. it's also in my best interest for you to get better. Absolutely. So there's no, like, oh, yeah. you're just in it for this. Or you're just, mm-hmm. It's like, no, like, you, like, like... Like, you're my responsibility now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need, like, you. I need you to I do get, well. And that's how I handle it. I don't know how every all yeah. the other therapist, but that's how I handle it. Because in my opinion, if you see progress dealing with me and you yeah, hear yeah. someone in your family is going through something, you're like, yo, I got a guy. Yeah. And 100%. then there's there, there's no greater marketing. There's no greater promotion that, than be like, word of mouth. this guy helped me because I was here when I met him and now I'm here now. You find it hard to like not bring this stuff like home with you or like internalize it a lot. Great mother, f- damn, that's, do, that's tough. Because I do know some like, some people can work at just like a restaurant and there's drama in the restaurant and they'll bring it home and it'll affect their home life. What yeah. you're doing is a lot more serious than yeah. working in a restaurant. Yeah, a lot of people work in like social work and that kind of thing, but like you know, because they're finding the ends of what's actually going on. So I'd imagine it's you know they came back from just seeing one of their child, you know, their kids that w- something just happened at the house and you knowing that they got to go back to the house or you talking to somebody who's going through something. Yeah. T- re- and out of this world type yeah, of shit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then you go home to your, you know, your your fiance, you're right. just trying to like relax and this shit might be weighing heavy. How right. do you deal with that? Right. So my my experience in mental health started off at a place called St. Vincent's, right? Okay. And this was in Fall River. And this was in 2013. And in St. Vincent's, not only did the children stay there because they were dealing with like a bunch of like mental health issues mm-hmm. but like they didn't have families to go to because mm. of whatever reason yeah 
but they all had a reason. And when yeah, you yeah. dig some, when you did some like deep diving into oh, a reason, I could oh. think Fall River. Think you know it was yeah, just yeah, like yeah, 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 it yeah. paints a picture on its yeah, own. It's fucked up. So the biggest thing that I honestly, it's hard for me to change, but it's like my view of a bad day mm-hmm. and the average view of a bad day mm-hmm. is two very different bad days. Yeah. So like there'll be times that my fiance is like really upset. Because something happened. Mm-hmm. And I'm kind of, I can't give her that same reflection energy back mm-hmm. because the totem pole to me on like what she just said is like, okay, that's like, like that's rough, but that's yeah. not like egregious. <sighs> yeah, it's not what some people are going like, through. Let's not, let's not like, compare like, like here. You got, you got yeah. a flat tire today. Like that sucks like really bad. Yeah. But guess what? Like we'll get you a new tire mm-hmm. and like you'll be fine next week. Yep. But like in that moment, and it's not her fault. It's not. It, it's just a lot of people. They'll they'll get really upset about things and overwhelmed. And then what I've also learned is like straight up, like everyone's threshold on what they deem as depressive, what they deem as trauma, is different. Yeah. And that's like that was like the number one thing that I've learned through this whole thing is like you might. So we make fun of like the the very like rich people on TV because like okay. they'll be distressed from like their clothes not being ironed on time or yeah, something yeah, like that. You'll yeah. be like, you know, get out of here. Mm-hmm. But if you really think about it, they're only using what their scale is. Yeah, yeah. So on their scale, like, they didn't have to worry about putting food on the table or at the rent all, bill. At all, so that's yeah. not on their scale. They, You can only deal with your scale. Yeah, yep. And so the minute I learned that, I was able to at least empathize with people that we might not have the same scale, but I can see that this is like... Over, yeah, it's a lot for you. Yeah, yeah. Jesus, man. Um, what is your favorite part about be, being like in the position you're in right now? Of all the things you're involved in, what do you, what do you think is your favorite part? Um, one, doing things my way. Big. Doing things my way. Yeah. Whether it be like my event business, whether it be you know doing things GM wise, uh, whether it be my practice, doing things my way, making my own schedule. Um, and, and, and not feeling bad about it mm. because yeah. a lot of people wouldn't put in the time and the effort that it took to get here. You know what I'm saying? Like, Straight up. like I, this journey started, I mean, in psychology, the journey started 2009, right? When I went mm. to college yeah. for real, like, yeah. so, so like 12 years ago, <laughs> damn. <laughs> yeah. so like, and then I've been working in the field for 10 years. So it's like, I, I put in the time. And it's like, now it's like, you you reached the whole precipice but now it's like you got a whole other one to go because you start your own practice now so it's a yeah. whole other ten thousand hours just started right that's, right that's right crazy thing yeah about. yeah no 100 percent. is there anybody you want to give a like a shout out to as far as in this space goes that you like look up to or like that you you admire how they work in this space in this um therapy space like whether it be you know what well, well known online or even somebody you know from college or any of your professors or anything like that, like who, you know, I, two, this is a two-part question. So one, is anybody you want to acknowledge as far as, you know, in this space? And also, who in this space is somebody you aspire to, you know, get to their level or anything like that? Like who, is this somebody, I, I, I'm curious to know, I love this therapist because the way he does this, or I, you know, I like this person. Maybe he's not a therapist, but he, you know, because I know your TED Talk is coming soon. You know what I'm saying? That TEDx is coming soon. You know what I'm saying? Fire, so like, yeah, yeah, I know that there's... I'm sure you've seen plenty of keynote speakers. And I'm sure you've seen yourself. I, well, if you haven't, then you look like you're ready for one right now. So we see it. So like, who who in that space is somebody you, you admire? Or? All right. So the person I admire was my uh, uncle, who mm. um, he was a psychiatrist in Jersey. And nice. that's how I even got started like in it. Because I did my senior project. Uh, we all have senior projects in high school. Yeah. And so I was able to shadow him. And mm. he even allowed me with, like, obviously the uh, the patient's help, but uh, allowed me to sit in on sessions. And wow. this was, like, you know, 16, 17 years old, getting, like, a really firsthand That's impression crazy. on it, you know? And that so, must like, have been impactful as fuck. Yeah. And so, like, him, like, doing his thing, and, like, I had to write a report on it. You know, I'm doing all this documentation. Wow. He was the one that, like, really, like, lit the candle, you know what I mean? So I got to give it to him. To be honest, when it comes to, like, the whole, like, therapist thing, I actually don't. Mm. I have individuals out there that I really like what they do. But this whole, my whole thing is always, like, travel the road less traveled, 
right? Okay. Um, so like, there, there's this, there's this. Uh, I, I think he's like a kind of like a just a general doctor. His name is Doctor Mike, right? Okay. He has like four point something million followers. Yep, yep. And like, he has a deal with Nike. Mm. As mm. a doctor, mm. that's fine. Like to me, mm. that's fly as hell. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So like, so like, boom. Like, yep. I want to inspire that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Bringing those worlds together, right? Now, you guys, you guys know like the rapper Loon. Mm-hmm. Loon has this thing where he has this organization that constantly like feeds like massive amounts of people. Yeah. I don't know if you guys know that, but yep. he has this thing where he constantly feeds massive, and it's like, boom, like that's something else I want to do. Gotcha. And so like I take pieces from a lot of things that I want to take pieces from and then create like who I want to become. Yeah, yeah, but there's yeah. not like one person I could honestly say like it's just like all oh, Yeah, yeah, gotcha, like, gotcha, gotcha. Because because then you're gonna be like kind of copying like one person. No, fair, no, that's fair, that's fair. No, that's fair. You know, it's funny you say that <laughs> it's funny you say the Nike thing because I'm like you know, it's funny, the, the crazy thing about Ray is that, okay, cool, he's doing all these other things, but he can easily, you know, play as the little brother of Omar and fucking Power or some shit like that. You could be an <laughs> actor if you wanted to. You could be a... You, have, you, you done some modeling, right, yeah, prior yeah, to? Yeah. So, like, I, I, you know, in my head, I'm like, damn, I would be kind of crazy to see him do, like, a Nike photo shoot, athletic yeah, shoot yeah. as a therapist type shit. Yeah, like, because I yeah, see that, yeah, I mean... Yeah, yeah, no, that's, and, and, that's, and that's, like, what, like, yeah, like, name me one, there isn't, right? So nah, it's like, there isn't. That's, like... I'm, I aim for just stuff that I think about in my head. Like, I aim for stuff that hasn't happened yet. Mm-hmm. And there's some, um, there's some safety to that that I feel because, like, if you fail, it's like you can always say, like, oh, well, like, maybe it's, like, it hasn't happened yet for a reason. Like, yeah, who yeah, knows? yeah, yeah, So, like, yeah. I find safety in that. Yeah. Gotcha. Whereas some people be like, oh, it hasn't happened, so, like, just don't do it. Mm, Me, no, I'm like, no, what no. do I really have to lose? Yeah, 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 yeah. You know? Like, I mean, to be honest, even being, like, a black male therapist, like, we always talk the time. We got to, like, really, like, think about the time period. Like, in 2009, 2013, mental health was not a thing. Yeah, don't even talk like, about it. everyone's getting paid pennies, like, on the dollar. Like, no one's talking about it. Like, so mm-hmm. I was on this mission before yep. even was a thing. I just liked it. Yeah. Mm. I was just like, if I'm going to do something, I'm going to do something that, like, is focused on psychology because it was the one class that like I could learn and obtain knowledge and right away use it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't okay, like a history yeah, yeah. class. It wasn't like a math class yeah, where it's yeah, like yeah. or a science class where like the perfect situation had to happen for you to for, like, like me to oh I learned this like <laughs> yeah, for you to apply for like, psychology algebra. was like right away. <laughs> yeah. Boom. So I was like, all right, that's what I like. Damn. Yeah. I could definitely see you being like an influencer, uh, like or a celebrity, like therapist. I, like, and yeah. I, I can't even really think of one, to be honest. I, I think they're, I, they're definitely out there. I just don't know. For yeah. Them. No, I, yeah, I, yeah. I believe it. And yeah. I, I think I think him continuing to do content is how you'll get there, to be right. honest, because there's a lot of content that's sort of along the lines that you're doing where people just, you know, they're telling people very motivational stuff, which I think is great. But what is their background? You know, yeah. have they been in it for 10 years? Have they always wanted to be a therapist? Like. And, 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 and that's why I, I do like showing the entrepreneur stuff, too, mm-hmm. because it's not just book smart. Mm-hmm. It's like I've learned this in school and I've also done this like yeah, outside yeah, yeah. of school. Mm-hmm. And it's like that duality of like, OK, like he must know something. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't yeah. know everything. <laughs> I don't even know half of everything. Yeah, but yeah. to get from point A to point now, yeah, yeah, I got to yeah, know yeah. like a little bit a of little something. Of some. yeah, and that's yeah. a lot more than a lot of people can say. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? No, 100 percent. I just like fluff like you know they talk about they're doing this they're doing that and then there's no substance there's yeah, no yeah, like yeah, yeah. like anything you know ideally bro how many kids you gonna have because uh, you're young and I, you gonna have kids to your fucking yeah, 75 so three i want three ideally want three. three kids three okay three. two boys and a girl I'm cool. just, i was about to ask two, boys. two okay. boys and a girl I'm yeah, cool. I think every guy wants to ask that what do you now nah, like you know let's just you know what do you, what would you like them to be doing i did you know if you could if you could pick um so I will give them the resources to work at the place I plan on creating, which I'll tell you off my Got it, got it, yep, yep, Um, yep. But other than that, I, I, so, so shout out to my tattoo artist, right? Uh, His name is Drew. And, uh, Drew tattoos? Yeah, 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 yeah. Drew tattoos? No, for real, for real. Uh, skinny black dude. Yeah, he does. He did. Yo, shout out to Drew tattoos. We gotta send this to him, dog. He did one of my tattoos. I'm talking about like 
2007, 2006? Yeah. Wait, maybe. Nah, he didn't first start, but like, I was talking about early on, bro. But shout out to Jew, yeah, dog. Yeah. What the fuck? That's so, what's up. So, um, he's like really into like, you know how some people are into those like, Old school like supercars that they look like shit, but for whatever reason they like the way yeah, they, they yeah, look yeah, like yeah. shit. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. the super low rider, the extra fin in the back. Yep, like, yep, yep, yep. The real like each part of like the upper wheel, like everything just looks like weird. Like to, to <laughs> me. but yeah, like, yeah, you yeah, can no, tell like there's enthusiasts. What that, like, they yeah. love that? Yeah, 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 like yeah. Supras, the old Lexuses, stuff like that. Bro, the, the, it's like the skylines from fucking Japan exactly, on the road yeah, side, exactly, on the other exactly. side, exactly. So he's like into it. He's like all about this yeah. and i love that like i love seeing people being not compromised on like what they actually like yeah mm. like he's not saying like oh like i have to have a foreign oh i have to he's like mm. no i really like making my cars like this yep. and he dives into this culture mm. and so with like you know my future kids it's like legitimately whatever i can see a light bulb go off in their eyes like Go for it. Do it. Yeah. As long as you're not hurting no one or, you know, you know, killing anyone's reputation yeah, 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 or yeah, making yeah. us look dumb, go, go for it. Yeah, that's right? very similar to with my parents because, like, they didn't, you know, I talked about this before, but, like, they didn't really buy me video games or anything like that growing up. But the moment they saw that I was interested in, like, banging on things, I was like, okay, well, there's something percussive, maybe drums. They bought me drums. Like, I'm thinking, you know, I'm coming from New York, you know, our parent, my parents, like, you know, everybody's struggling, everybody's broke. Yeah. The minute I, I showed any interest in drums, they we went to Guitar Center. They spent a fifteen hundred dollars. I was like, "Yo, where'd you get that? The fuck, this money come from?" <laughs> but they was just like, "Yo, we're not gonna. Yeah. I'm not gonna." And, and now I understand. Like, there's like, "Yo, we're not gonna fuck all that. You know, spending hundreds of dollars on stupid games. Like, yeah. use me. No, no. Yeah. Stay outside. Do whatever you're doing. Yeah. But like, you want to play drums? And you know, thank you, mom. Thank you, pa. Like, you know, now I'm here. You know, we, I'm. Luckily, I've been able to make a way for myself, you know, playing drums, doing things we love as far as, you know, video production, that kind of thing. Do you ever feel like, because something you said earlier and I felt it, you know, I said, what was, you know, your favorite part about this? And you said, doing things my way or my time. And mm -hmm. do you ever feel guilty that you have, you know, this level of freedom, even at this, because it gets better. It's obviously going to continue yeah. to get better. But like, there is a huge level of freedom where you can... You know what your minimum is to make whatever you need to make, and you don't need to take on clients, et cetera, et cetera. Maybe you could do this or do that. Do you ever feel guilty about that? Because I know I do sometimes. Like, you yeah. know, you know, you got people a little bit older than you that not doing nearly as like you feel like you're fifty steps ahead of them, and they're fifty plus, whatever the case is. You're thirty two, gr you're like you're thriving, striving. Do you ever feel yeah, guilty yeah. about that? So, um, so it's yes, but then it's also followed by a quick no. Okay, cool. So like initially it's like, yeah, but then I ask myself like, what did I do to get to this point? And that usually changes everything for me. Got it. Like even like my first like event, like after college, like it was by myself. Mm. It was from a connection that I made. Mm -hmm. I had the meeting. I made, I got the flyer done. Like, mm -hmm. so like, it, like I can't, what am I going to be ashamed of all the work I put in, like, and be like mad about that? Like, I can't really do that. <laughs> and especially nowadays when it comes to like Uber and like Lyft and, you know, uh, all like the food delivery services. Like, if they had that back when I was in college, like, I would have ran it up. Oh, like, sure. I would have yeah, ran yeah, 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 yeah. it <laughs> up. Like, that, like, <laughs> dog. So, like, it's just, I don't know. Um, but would I say that I am fortunate? A hundred percent. Okay. But as equally as fortunate, I worked hard. I worked mm. hard. You know what I mean? Um, because I was fortunate to have, uh, you know, the parents I had, the the foresight that my father instilled in me. Yep. Um, so, like, I guess I can't take all the credit, but... Yeah. Um. Just you know, before we got, I got I got a couple more questions. Yeah. Yeah. No. As far ahead. as your you know your parents go, what kind of upbringing did you have? Because like, did you grow up in a yeah. two parent household? Yeah. Did you grow up you know a single parent yeah. household? So I, I my parents got divorced when I was two. Okay. So uh, when I was six, my mom moved to uh, the Bronx, and Ooh. then so I was actually raised by my father here, and okay, then I would yep. spend like vacations and summers with her in New York. Yep. Yeah. In New okay. York. Um. But. Uh, my, my childhood wasn't bad at all. Like, okay, cool. my, my, my father took really good care of me. Um, my mom, when I visited her, took really good care of me. There yeah, was yeah. no uh, qualms about so that. So you said your, your pops was, like, the man back growing up. Yeah. I'm, I'm interested now. You know, you got me thinking about my dad. Yeah. 
like what would what does he have to do for what did he do for work at no, least back so, in the day or what so does he do now? So basically, like the last time East Providence High won a state championship in basketball, mm. my father was number one in Rhode Island. Oh, and they and they won it. Let's go. You know what I'm saying? That's fine. So uh, he actually was probably like so in basketball, a big thing is like being part of like the thousand point club. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Yep. And so he was part of the thousand point club as a small forward shooting guard mm. before that they had a three point line. Damn. So it was all twos and like yeah, free that, you had to grind for that shit. It was like wow. it was like real like yeah, deal. Like, well, I mean, so he played. How tall is your dad? He's he's my he's a little shorter than me. Yeah, he's a little shorter than me. Um, Big body, like six though. one, six okay, one. Okay, okay. Um, and so he played ball at Brown. Ended up getting knee surgery and like obviously that like that killed like his whole basketball <laughs> stuff. But he even had the foresight then of being like, I'm good for Rhode Island, but I know what else is out there. Yeah. So let me go to Brown because like he could have like. It was funny because he actually showed me he got invited to train with the the Miami Dolphins because back then I guess the football teams they were just looking at like they were just trying to acquire athletes like mm. we'll teach you the game yeah 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 if you're yeah, like yeah, big yeah, strong yeah, yeah, can yeah, jump yeah, 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 we yeah, can yeah. teach you how to do this over here <laughs> like, so he has like a thing where it's funny. like he got invite to train with the Dolphins. And he wasn't a football player. Yeah. It was, it was That's crazy. So like, something like that happened to me similar in high school where I was uh, sort of playing football just for like half a year. I was also playing drums at the same time, so yeah. I chose to do that. But the hockey team, the hockey coach would approach me like, look, <laughs> my man, yeah, yeah. come in. Yeah. We'll come you. into the thing. He's like, yeah. you can't. I was like, yo, bro, I can't even. I barely roll it. But he's like, oh, fuck all that. <laughs> he's like, I don't even need you to learn this shit. He's like, come in. <laughs> Rough a couple guys up because they saw me in practice. You right. know, you know, co- yeah. the high school coach is also yeah, yeah, assistant yeah. coach of the hockey team. You know, main coach of the baseball. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, he was yeah. like, "Yo, I need you to come in, fuck these dudes up, stay in the penalty a few minutes, come back out." Yeah, He's yeah. like, "Just get to the guy, rough him up, and then learn to skate to the you know to the penalty box and <laughs> yeah, stay there." I'm like, "Are you crazy?" <laughs> He's like, "Yo, we just need somebody to you know what I'm saying just." But that, that's funny you say that. So you know, you said you mentioned your pops being um you know uh, playing basketball. I know you have a little bit of a basketball. basketball Basketball background. Mm-hmm. What what's your history in basketball as far as you I, played in high school? I, I I wasn't half as good as my father. No, but no. you you did play in high school or yeah, anything yeah, like yeah. that. So the a real funny thing is uh when EP won a state championship, the point guard at the time who won like he it was like a it was like a fairy tale thing. Like the point guard made a buzzer beater shot to win like the state championship. Amazing, that, right? amazing. But listen to this. So the point guard's name was George Leonardo, right? Okay. My father's name is the same as mine, Raymond mm-hmm. Lambert. George Leonardo's son, George Leonardo, yeah. ended up in my class That's at crazy. EP High. That's crazy. Wow. So we're both freshmen in 05. That's so, so crazy. So the East Providence Post had a picture of both of us in practice, like next to each other, yeah, right? Yeah. And they're like, George Leonardo, Ray Lambert, back again to like, <laughs> Buddy, you know what I mean? We're about to get another chip. Back. Let's fam, go. Fam. <laughs> Did y'all got it? I, I wasn't like... <laughs> It wouldn't even. It wouldn't. It would be disrespectful to my father to even compare yeah, my basketball yeah, skills to his. Yeah. I'm not even gonna do that. Honestly. But I see. I know you be getting busy at the I, runs. I, I at the I runs hoop. now. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. Like I, I feel like I can hold my own. But yeah, I wasn't yeah. like averaging 20, 30. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. my last two games, I had like 11 points and I had 14 points, which in high school is pretty good, mm-hmm. uh, D1 and stuff. But I was never. I was never. I was good enough to be on the team. I was good gotcha, enough to hold gotcha. my own. I was never like. People were like, oh wow, who's that? He's like, coming I was out. Never he's, like he's, that. Next, I was he's next. Never, okay. I was never like that. So we've kind of we've kind of like went around the world and been around the block with you as yeah. far as this conversation goes. Is there anything you want to like touch on before we get out of here, Brody? Like, guess what? Because I know you have you have a million things. I I, I just want to make sure I, yeah. we touched on all the different ventures you're you're on right now, and I want to make sure you don't. Uh, mm. I mean, I own a multifamily too. And I oh, think you're, you're dabbling in real estate as well. Yeah, yeah that's big. Damn, that's big. That's big. And that, when that did was you... one of the best decisions I made. And and is that something that you know? Did that come later on, or was that something you was already on your way doing, or like was that you know? Okay, I, I'm now I'm understanding how finances work, and I know this might be a good investment. So, like most people, when I first started making good money, mm-hmm. I blew it. Got it. And then so when it came back around the second time, I was like, I gotta do something right with this. Got it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And then just like like I said before, like everyone has like what they view as like good and like what they want to aspire to and for whatever reason it just grabbed me that like the people that were like buying homes people are buying real estate like i just was like oh that's fly like yeah, yeah i just yeah. like that right and it's something that always goes up mm-hmm. so it's like always yeah 
And so 2021, I bought a three family in Providence. Nice. And like, it was one of the best decisions I ever made. Nice. Yeah. I got to, I'm in the middle of selling one of them, but yeah, I feel you. Yeah. That's, that's amazing, bro. So real estate, nightlife, therapy. What else is, what else is in uh, Ray, Ray Lambert's world that we don't know about? Um, that you guys don't know about. Uh, oh, that you would like. You would like the world I, to know because we know you're a family uh, man. I love. I love stand. I love watching stand up comedy. That's Who real, is? Man. Give me. A, give me some of your stand up. Uh, like you your favorite camera. Shot. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. You all know my st- favorite stand up comedian. Period. Louis C K. Word. I love Louis. He's Louis so C K. Well. Yep. Okay. That's my. That's my favorite of all time. Right now, that's fire. Yeah, he's a creep. Like and yeah, all oh, that. That, that, <laughs> that real but, dark. It's real dark. But but I fuck with like him. purely stand up. He he got it. He got it. Cause Listen. he'll what he'll his his comedy is very like psychology too. Because he'll take like some everyday stuff that we do mm-hmm. and he'll pretty much just break it down. Like why do we do that? Yeah like, yeah 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 yeah, like, yeah yeah. And then it's like oh shit like why? Do and we it do makes that? it funny too. Yeah. Oh so like oh, he's hilarious. Oh fuck! So I, fuck I, saw, I fuck with I saw, Dave, Kirkland. I saw Dave Chappelle in Boston. How was that? It was good. It was when uh, the people were. Yelling at him and walked out. I was there for that. That's cool. Damn. It be like big news or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was there for that. Damn. Damn. You ever seen a show called uh, Kill Tony? Oh. Every Monday. What oh, are you let's go, about? bro. What are you That's shit. Exactly. Every I think it's on, no, no, it's on tonight. It's on yeah. tonight. Yeah, yeah we watched that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Bro, we watched that shit religiously, bro. Yo, two All those guys. Yo, yeah, we're brothers now. Yeah, <laughs> nah. That's Cam, like, yo, Cam, Cam, Cam Patterson is the funniest motherfucker. Cam's real good. You know what? Um... The the guy at the end he grew on me. William, like William him Montgomery. He used to, ha- like him, he used to hate him. He used to I hate him. I didn't like him at first at all. Yo, yo, yo. He, he screams a lot, but once it's kind of funny now. Damn. Like as Murph, I will. I, we get to, we get to his set. I'm like, alright, cool. Yeah. Episode's over. Yeah, 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 I'm not gonna lie. I love you now. I love you. Where's my camera? Yeah. I love you now, my bro. Is that red monster? He grew bro. on me. I've been making my fiance watch it sometimes, and she hates him too. Bro. But uh, Hans Kim is a goat. Oh nah, Hans God. Kim. Uh, uh, what's his name? He he just left. He's doing no, David Lucas. David, David Lucas, Lucas fucking goaded. Um, beast. I, yo, the, just two weeks ago, they had this like 12 year old looking kid up there. Oh yeah, yeah, he yeah. did really good too, yeah. bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That shit was, really was one of the. Yo, he was really I was, I was like watching the set. I was just for one. I love when you can watch, especially when killed when Tony's like, "What the fuck is going on?" <laughs> and Tony was like, "Yeah." The whole time he's like, even as soon as he started talking, he's like, "What is this shit?" And it's, yeah, it was just funny. And I love my favorite thing about Kill Tony. Shout out to Kill Tony. It's like the 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 opportunities that come from somebody who really cooks on that show and you tell you can tell he's waiting he's just waiting to give away a golden ticket give away tour dates this and that and it's just yeah. when he finds that person you see that shit connect now you know it's gonna be different because boom it happened for Cam Patterson the Cam, first Cam's night been became a regular yeah um and he's been Storching, starching, whatever the fuck. He's been scorching with fire the in, since the first day nah, he got Han there. Says, Han says it all the time. He's like, I owe my whole career to you, Tony. <laughs> Thank you. Yo, don't, don't take it away from me. So, bro. The one lesson that that show can teach a lot of people is that it doesn't dim your shine if you're giving the spotlight to other people. Yeah, yeah. In fact, longevity-wise, it's super important that yeah, you do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're putting you know on those... I mean? uh, you, you're, well, you're planting the seeds and you're like, you know. Like, say if there was, like, a content creator coming up and, like, you guys kind of, like, give him some shine real mm-hmm. quick or something like that. And say if, like, he just ends up meeting a rapper or a streamer or a YouTuber Absolutely. and blows up, right? And now when you guys are like, oh, you want, oh, yeah, sure. And, like, yeah. boom, that relationship that you guys opened the door with, it paid back dividends. Yeah. So, like, I... And that was something that I always do. Like, I give a lot of opportunity to a lot of people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, behind closed doors and in front of people. Like, I give a lot of opportunities to a lot of people. Yeah, that's been my biggest thing. Like, not biggest thing, but, like, we've, we've been heavy on that, too. Like, as far as any type of work goes or whatever, like, we try to do our best to over give in a sense where you know not not that i'm doing it on purpose but like i want to provide so much value that you know at some point it'll come back in some way whether we're true or the next person or whatever like i just want to make sure because they always makes you know for my morale it makes you know feels like it makes everything feel better you know what yeah, i'm saying yeah yeah that's important to me would you do a minute on kill tony if you were if, you were, if, if you were if you were there so, would you so, sign up so i i would i would i would sign up i, I would probably try yeah, yeah. i would yeah. try I think it, it, would, it would have to be uh 
self deformation. I just feel like that's yeah. the way to go. Like, it definitely yeah. is. I feel like when people don't do that, it's like they're already kind of sorry, like strike one or one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I love self deformation. Or yeah. it has to be just funny as fuck. Either that yeah, or yeah, just yeah, it just yeah, gotta yeah, be yeah, blatantly yeah. just yeah. funny. I like, think if I'm in the building, I'm gonna have to sign up. Like even like I wouldn't go there and wait in the bar for ten weeks yeah, like no, some no, of these no guys way, do. No way, no but way. if we do, them. but if we do visit. Oh, if we yeah. if first of all, we get you have to buy tickets now for a trip we don't even have booked yet. This shit is so oh, yeah. bro. Yeah. Everything's yeah. always sold out. But you see, I want to let's keep talking about it. So you can be like, you know what, this podcast is all right. Who else is too into over there? Like, yeah. let's, yeah. let's get the, not, not get them on. Nah, yeah, let's, let's 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 they can come visit. Great, man. Yeah. I, yeah, let's make a deal right now though. If anybody ends up in Austin, you gotta go. Yeah. We yeah. gotta yeah. we gotta hit each other like yo. I mean, we I, might we, we, we can plan a trip in the future. Like, lie, bro. Online, like we can. All I would love to go. I, I don't care. Yeah. I, I will go to Austin yeah. just to go to fucking yeah. Tony yeah. on and a plus Monday. Plus, the whole night. week is stacked. Like every comedy show, Shane Gillis, Matt yeah. McCusker, all these guys bro, are just. What? Fifth Street sounds like old Kenny Plaza though. The way they talk Yo, about yeah, it. they talk about <laughs> bro. <laughs> what? They talk about yeah. it like it is like yeah. It's dun, not like dun, 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 dun. Not, yeah, Zombie Land, like right outside the walls of the comedy club. What's Zombie Land now? Remember we stayed at the W and W. It's still a great hotel in Hollywood, but. Hollywood, bro, it was straight zombies. Bro, it's, it's Cali, California is different. I, right I, now. I heard, I heard that it went super downhill. Yeah, yeah. Bro, we had a dog. When I tell you we had a beautiful hotel, one of the best hotels in a few spots in LA, and you just you go out. Yeah, as soon as you get to like the front, like uh, outside, not even outside of the like the like once you get outside the lobby and other shit, it's just like zombie land. And then at nighttime, you go down the block a bit just to go like you know just to get a couple snacks at Seven Eleven, bro. I was walking down the block and I just saw I was like three homeless people fucking butt naked, <laughs> like just butt naked nigga in the street, and I was just like, That's crazy. "Is this what we doing?" Like. I need to get the I need to get my I need to get my candy a couple of things get the fuck up out of here. Yeah, that's why. But anyway, fuck all that. Um, but uh, yeah. So like I said, was there anything? Is it you know anything else you want to touch on, Brody? Before we get out of here? Um, no, no. Word. No, no. I, I just uh, I guess just like follow me. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, you give me give us yeah. some. I need just, that website. We need the I mean, website. The if IGs. You, if, you, if you just go to like my IG at yep. Rayl R A Y Y Y L, I got a link tree with like everything. Else. Everything. Is, yeah, and then just like smooth podcast. Smooth podcast. Fire, man. I can't. Dog, the Smooth Podcast, I want to just congratulate you. First of all, on everything else, but the Smooth Podcast, shit, like, obviously we're in the same space, and I just love to see the, you know, the, the setup is amazing. Thank amazing. You. Quality. Yeah, crack. Yeah, yeah, Fucking video production. Crack. You're consistent, too. That's the most important. Yeah. You're, consi you're consistent with it. Yeah, That's dope. yeah, yeah. And, yeah. The, and, no, and the quality of the actual conversation incredible and that and that's like and that's kind of what i was gearing towards yeah, earlier yeah. like there's sometimes i'm in the mood for like just like silly podcasts yep, yep, just yep. talking about pop culture and whatever like bullshit but then there's other podcasts that are like no like really serious conversations mm -hmm. oh, yeah. and so like a lot of my conversations uh they invoke like future conversations to be had mm -hmm. they put the person in a light that like others would have never like known yeah, like yeah, in Rhode yeah. Island like we dap up a lot of people when they see them out but we don't really know them Not and so Facts. like Not my facts. chair allows like a deeper conversation to be had of 100%. like who this person is yeah that's why I love podcasts, man. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm not often, even just in today's culture, but we get to sit down. We've been going for an hour. When was the last time we had an hour conversation? I mean, you do it all the time. It's yeah. kind of yeah, 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 your yeah, job, yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah. Low key, low key. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but no, it doesn't feel like it at all. This, this is great, man. Man, great. listen, bro. Listen, Ray. Congratulations on everything, my brother. Like, the, uh, yeah, you're such an inspiration, especially at 32 years old for so many people younger than you, older than you, your age. The things that you're accomplishing now, um, people just, you know, they they only dream of doing these type of things. And the fact that you're doing it now is absolutely incredible. So I just want to say, you know, from from our, you know, from our platform to everything you got going on, I just want to say congratulations. And, like, I really, really hope that you continue to thrive in this and anything you need from us, bro, you know, we're here. We can we can talk offline. And I, I'm going to need y'all to sit down at the Smooth Podcast. Oh, absolutely. Well, yeah, I'm I'm tell us that. We're I there, bro. That. Yeah. We yeah. make you drive through the woods for our shit. So, yeah. so we got yeah. Yeah. Sorry about the, sorry <laughs> about the drive. I, I had some questions here, but I'm like, oh, I'm going to be selfish. Save it for mine. No, okay, fine. bro. That's no, fine. Fine. Yeah, that's fine. Fine. yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. But, um, yo, man, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Every All his uh, his link tree and everything will be in the description down below. Yes, um, His socials, his website. Make sure if you need any type of therapy, Please 
please contact them. Um, wherever you are in the world, you can be in India and you know, in fucking Turkey, wherever. This man is available. I mean, well, you know, if he's not booked up for the next year, but right, right. At, right now, you guys can call him. Um, and we're looking forward to seeing everything you, yeah, the way everything continues to develop. So, congratulations, my nah, bro. I appreciate you soon, y'all man. for having me, and I'm just as proud as you guys. I uh, appreciate you, you bro. Um, it's it's really amazing what you guys have grown to. The, I don't know if I'm allowed to say where I'm at. Well, like, no, 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 of course, of course. Amazing. Yeah, 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 absolutely, um, man. Like, man. like when he told me the location, I was like, that city? Like, what? <laughs> like, yep, yep. I don't think I've ever been there. Like, yep, what yep. the heck? But, but you're here now. here now, I'm like, I get it. Yeah. <laughs> I get it. You got some, <laughs> privacy, when, some privacy over here. I get it. I take everything back, and I get it. And I get yeah, it. man. Like, you, and then this is, I like, it. I was telling him off, but this is only V1. We got that joint done in the back. You'll see, you'll see what I was talking about. You'll be like, and then after that, you come visit us at the middle right. school we buy because we're gonna flip everything in the middle school. Nah, too. dope, dope. Fuck and, yeah. And like, listen, man, I'm, I'm, I, I work with like, you know, I have a, I have one videographer that I work with a lot, but I'm, I'm trying to like really step up the content game. Yep, yep. So we'll probably ha- like work a lot more in the future. Let's talk, man. And it'll be cool because like it's like we grew from like events like yeah you know Damn. the fab concert to like other yeah. stuff too oh my you know god what I'm that fab concert with yo yeah. yo we fucked that video up for him too yeah, remember it was, was your yeah yeah that's ch- chain spinning this shit yeah, here oh yeah, 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 yeah that, yo, was crazy. that video still holds up i love that, that. Was, yo Merv was a fucking demon dog Damn, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was yeah, years yeah. ago too yeah that was fine all right work fine. well guys thank you again make sure you like comment subscribe and you tune into the next one peace out peace what are you talking about we don't care two coffee